You never expect to be sitting across the desk from a doctor when they tell you that you have stage three cancer. It's just not a scenario that you put yourself in. Whenever I heard the word cancer when I was younger, like, I thought you'd die. So um, in January, I was diagnosed with CNS lupus, which is a autoimmune disease where the antibodies in my body that protect me against infection or colds that you usually get, um, it's attacking my own body. Well, I was diagnosed January 28th of uh, 2011 and by February 28th, one month to the day later, I was uh, doing my first chemotherapy and uh, radiation treatment and I did 28 straight days of radiation and 35 straight days of chemotherapy. So it meant uh, going to the hospital every day. I had three uncles pass away of prostate cancer and last spring my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I was in school in grade seven and I was leaving and my principal, he was like a nice guy, you know, but he just came up to me one day and he just gave me a hug and he said, you know, I don't know, he gave me some words of wisdom and I was like, what, what? So I went home and then I was walking down the street and like there was just a bunch of cars at my house, like my whole family was there. So like I walk in and everyone was like crying and stuff. But I think the scariest part was that they told me that if it wasn't dealt with right away, I could have died. Um, so I remember going into sick kids on January 26th, being told exactly what I had and wanting to come back the next day and start treatment. So on January 27th, I started cyclophosphamide chemotherapy. Also, my father had surgery very quickly and he was treated well and um, from my own experience at Sunnybrook. Um, I think it's really important to stress the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. And part of that is the research that goes into developing early diagnosis and treatments, which are really key in saving people's lives. I went on chemotherapy for like nine months, but like the first two months, I was going to the hospital a lot, like five days a week, like eight hour days, just lying in a bed. I had known it was common, but I didn't know that it affects one in six men in Canada. It's actually had a positive life-changing perspective because I immediately, upon being told that I had cancer, um, readjusted my priorities in life and my family and my friends became instantaneously the most important things. I'm still friends with all my nurses, but um, they'd come in and they'd have to wear masks and gloves and eye goggles and this stuff. They looked like ducks. Like, it was so funny. I was just like sitting at home one day and like my dad comes in to my room and he's like, Mario Lemieux's on the phone. And I was like, nah, no he's not. And then he's like, yeah he is, here's the phone. So he gave the phone to me. I was just like, hello? And like, it was Mario Lemieux and he just called me to tell me like how he had the same thing. Like he got through it and he went back to playing hockey. Cause like, I played hockey a lot. And he just like told me how he got through it. And then I accidentally hung up on him. Yeah, you know what? Um, people who have cancer are people first. I'm a teacher first and a patient second. And the greatest thing that the staff has done here is treat me as Brent and uh, not sick Brent. So I, I appreciate very much that BCSS is involved so heavily in fundraising for cancer initiatives like Movember. Um, I was just glad I finally could, you know, live my life again.